I first want to say that this is not an I'm retiring from YouTube video. Although I do respect uh, YouTubers' intentions to take a step back from the content they produced and to explore other mediums or for whatever reason they have to, they have to retire. I mean, some of them have been doing this sort of, these sort of videos since YouTube's inception in 2004. That's 20 years ago. I was in elementary school 20 years ago. Crazy to think about that now, huh? But first, before I kind of get into what I've been thinking about lately, I want to go into a little bit of a history of how I got into voice acting and what sort of led to this sort of moment that I've had or just sort of this decision I've made. So to start off, I started voice acting in July of 2019 as a way for me to stay creative during a time when I was um, living up in Anchorage, Alaska. And I've always felt that Alaska isn't really strong on the creative arts. I mean, it has a community theater, there's a band, there's a symphony, but it never, in my opinion, felt that they were strong on the creative arts. So in that time, I began to participate really in anything, fan dubs, comic dubs, manga dubs, even a few independent video games here and there, some game jams and all that, having a great time. And it was around late 2019 to early 2020 that I started putting out my own YouTube videos. I've had, I've actually had my YouTube channel since 2008 and posting lyric videos sporadically on the channel and then deleting them after several years. But during this time, I was posting a lot of comic dubs on the channel. They were getting some pretty decent views and I was pretty proud of it. And then it was around October 2020 when I put out the Taxidermist comic dub. It was, first off, it was a lot of fun to make and it was definitely a different comic for me to work on. I thoroughly enjoyed working on it even though I wasn't the main character in there, I was just background characters. But it was a lot of fun to make and its view count and popularity skyrocketed. It skyrocketed. Its view count and popularity skyrocketed. I'll get that word right. And I was just amazed by it. Like how I went from basically, how I went basically from like 300 subscribers up to now probably 3,000 subscribers and counting more by, you know, within the, within the few months after the video was posted. And I, I kept going on this high of making a bunch more of has been hotel comics and whatnot, and more some of the research based videos that I put out. I mean, if you've watched those, um, and, but what happened was of, of a few things, um, first off, in November of 2020, my grandpa passed away. And in around December, um, I, after doing um, the Has Been Comic Apology, I decided to take, take a month off to not only take proper time to grieve for the loss of my grandpa, but also to um, spend, spend the holidays with my family. You know, it was time for me just to rest after basically spending week after week after week putting out all these comics and continuing to get just views and stuff like that. But as I came back from the break and was posting again, my views started to decline. It went from basically skyrocketed to declining with all within the span of three months. And I was very confused as to why this was happening. I thought that maybe, I thought that maybe with all of that, you know, with all that consistency that I would still ride along the algorithm, but that didn't seem to be the case at all. Um, but, and it was just becoming really frustrating as to what was going on. I was trying to put out more and more videos, but the views just kept declining and declining. And my channel had basically become stagnant and even in some of the, in a way kind of continues to be a bit stagnant and I was very frustrated as to like what was going on and I was kind of think figuring out a few things about why this may have happened and one of and I think one there's two there's 
I've there's a couple of there's two big things that um, I can say what have could have contributed first off to the channel's meteoric rise and decline. Uh, first off is definitely uh, Pasman Hotel. Um, when that first came out in 2019, it was very popular upon its release, and it really set itself apart from all the other animated shorts that were on YouTube at the time, and it really, really had a promising future with its, you know, it's very, with its setting, its story, and its very colorful cast of characters. And what also helped too is that in 2020, uh, the music video for Addict featuring the original voice actor of Angel Dust was, um, was in the music video as well. And, and that got very popular combined with A24 purchasing the rights to Hasman Hotel. A second reason, of course, a second reason I feel is COVID. I don't normally like to bring in real life events onto my channel or any of that just because in an effort to keep things a bit more positive and for the channel itself to kind of stay a little bit timeless, if that makes sense. But in this context, uh, COVID definitely, you know, COVID definitely changed a lot of how we do things and a lot of a, a lot of people had to basically had to quarantine themselves. They had a lot of time on their hands and they, you know, took up different interests and, you know, they also got really into fandoms, more fandoms, um, Hasman Hotel included. So because of those things combined, I think that really helped with the channel's rise to its popularity. But at the same time, it contributed to their, its decline because between 2019 and 2024, that's the space when Hasman Hotel was released as a pilot, and then when it finally was released as a series on Prime. And for fandoms, as I've learned, that's a lot of time to wait. And because of that, if people if people are just const are just sitting around and waiting for update after up updates and all that, people are going to get bored and you know they're going to move on, and and so with COVID as you know COVID went into decline, you know people, you know people also kind of moved on, you know they kind of they kind of got their life back together again, but even then during this time it was still very very difficult for me to figure out like what is going on with my channel and all of this stuff was just really frustrating me like and I got really just just really burnt out I got really depressed and even that sort of disillusionment and burning out kind of bled into my personal life I honestly thought I was a failure in my family because I couldn't really hold a hold anything couldn't hold the actual job couldn't even be successful as a content creator but I got to thinking more about it and it's just, and to be honest, I've outgrown the old content I used to make. I've kind of outgrown the, you know, the fan produced comics that are so popular to dub. I've, I've just outgrown that for those, for those fandoms. And, and I want, and I realized that I just need to put out stuff that I like. And really just only me because it was a very frustrating few years putting out as little content as possible. I, I barely put out anything and that doesn't even count like the bunch of projects that I was working on that got canned because they just weren't working out. I mean, a video on lost animated adaptations, a video on lost anime, um, and just... A video too on an English dub of Dragon Ball Z movies that was produced in France, but I can't remember the production name anymore. I can't remember the production company that made this. And I kind of realized that, and even some of the videos that I was putting out, like the research-based videos, I was putting these videos out or making them not because I like these sort of topics, but I just thought it would give me a quick view or two. And seeing the views on stuff like, you know, 
the Japanese games based off of Western properties and Ashcan videos. I wasn't passionate about those. I think really it was just because I thought it would make a good YouTube video. And there's a difference between making a YouTube video that may not get a lot of views, but you enjoyed making versus a YouTube video that gets a lot of views, but you hated making. And I unfortunately was in the latter. And it was also around the time too, around late 2022, that I was able to produce a dub of the webtoon Spotlight. And I completed the whole comic. And it really hit me that I had a lot of fun making this comic. And, and although I didn't get a ton of views on there, I still had an absolute blast. And the people that I worked with on this comic had an absolute blast working on it. And it, it got me to thinking a lot about, you know, what's going on now. I mean, it doesn't get a lot of views, but I had fun. And that kind of goes back to, again, making videos that I enjoy making. I said it before in a community post that I was taking my time on these videos, on these some videos that I was working on. And that still stands. Some of the previews of the upcoming manga dub that I've put out, that is something that I've enjoyed working on too. And that really did hit me that I just got to make stuff that I like. Whether it be the manga dub for Yotsuba that I mentioned, or Peanuts videos, because I have a blast making those, or really just any music that I put out there. That is where I honestly find a ton of joy making, because it's stuff that I'm passionate about. Now, some may say, well, what about this manga dub? I just say you didn't like making these comic dubs. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, with a manga, such as this Yotsuba one I'm working on, <clears throat> I don't have to sound like a character's voice. I don't have to sound like a character's voice. I felt like in, in the Hazen Hotel comics that while I did enjoy for a while of voicing Angel Dust, or maybe even us for that matter, it kind of got to a point where I was trying to sound too much like the original voice actors from the pilot and not trying to make it my own. And I feel like that's a, that's a huge issue, I feel, when people put out these, you know, comic dubs, you know, they, they try to sound exactly like these characters that are in, you know, video games, TVs, and movies, but they don't, like, put the acting first. And personally, I didn't put the acting first. And the thing about Hazard Hotel, I think I've outgrown it. You know, I haven't produced an, a Hasbro comic dub since Alistair Takes a Bath, and that was, that was two years ago. But I think the comic Rescues and Revelations that I did, it was sort of my way of now realizing that it was sort of my way of just moving on from Hasbro Hotel. And from here on out, I'm really just going to make my own videos and my own content that I enjoy. It may take about a month, it may take two months, even three months. And sure, it may not get a lot of views, but I'll be happy with the videos I make. And it'll, I will find more joy in taking my time with a Yotsuba manga dub chapter than putting out a video that on a topic that I really don't like that much or I'm not very much interested. So I'm not retiring from YouTube. I'm just changing my focus. And it may not be what you wanted to hear. And that's okay, because you're not robots. You're human beings with feelings and hobbies. But it's something for my own health and well-being and really to maintain some consistency in my life. I will continue to do voice acting but it'll be on my own terms. Whether it be videos that I create or gigs that I book through with my agent, but that's kind of how it will be. So if you're still watching this and we've met through voice acting, I just wanna say thank you so much. You have been such 
a positive impact on me and and a positive impact on being a voice actor and just a human being and I've always had this problem of self-doubt you know not having self-worth and feeling like that I started too late I started when I was 25 I'm 30 years old it may not look like it but I'm 30 but if you're watching this you have given me a positive impact on my life and I will never forget that so that is that's what I wanted wanted to say it may have sounded a bit disjointed but it was something that I just I really had to put out there and I hope you got something out of it if there's one thing that I want to leave off of it's from a youtuber who has had a little bit of controversy, but I think the quote that he made when he left Game Grumps, John Tron, when he said, sometimes you gotta take inventory on yourself. And that's kind of what I had to do. I had to take that inventory and realize what was it that I found true joy in and what was just something that was there to give me a quick view or two. Thank you so much for watching.